Down in MMA here on IBTV.us and Roku TV. This is our third and final segment. Um, we're going to talk all things Cowboy Cerrone in this segment. We previewed it last week. You saw uh, kind of our breakdown and our thoughts about the fight against Yancey Medeiros. And now we have some of our answers. I'm going to, you know, this may be the one time going forward in, in the rest of our show's career that I may have picked picked a fight over you and it was totally by just by just heart I, I said I was putting my heart on my sleeve and going with Calvo but I, I did have some some reasonable thoughts on why I picked him and it was his back was completely against the wall and quite frankly I didn't like how Yancey uh, kind of tried to take the cowboy approach of making it a buddy buddy thing in the during fight week up to the weigh-ins and all the way through the fight so there's a lot to react to but what did you think of Cowboy's performance at the end of the day? Well, first, let's say Cowboy Cerrone screwed me again. <laughs> he always screws me. I bet for him. He loses. I bet against him. He wins. I just no. You did I'm call just, that. You I'm, did call that. You, you know, said I'm that just, when you pick him, he or when you pick against him, he wins. So you did get you did get that right. I, I'm just gonna uh, from now on just don't ask me about Cerrone <laughs> fights. I'll have no opinion moving forward. I'm just gonna stay away from it. Donald, you're the man. Um, but. Hey man, good for him. He needed this fight, and and let's be honest, the UFC is not really the same if Donald Cerrone's not there. Oh, you know, like I mean, he's he's such a huge part of that uh, of what they do. You know, he takes fights short notice. He fights all the time. Like he's just he's an amazing fighter. Okay, so it's good to see him win. I, I genuinely thought Yancey was going to be too much for him. Uh, the buddy buddy stuff. I don't really that stuff doesn't really bother me too much. The only time I don't like it is like. Um, you see two guys fighting, and one of them clubs the other guy, and then he kind of shakes his head at him, and they hug right in the middle of the fight. That kind of stuff I don't like. Um, I don't mind so much if they touch gloves, you know. No, like, that, that, if you get hit really hard, and you're acknowledging, like, and you're like, oh, yeah, you got me on that when you touch gloves. I'm okay with that. But um, So, you know, the friendly stuff doesn't really bother me too much. Like, I'm the kind of guy where I don't think you have to manufacture drama in order to sell a fight. To me, as a fighter, if you if you have to cause some kind of drama you have to manufacture stuff to me that means that your fighting style doesn't speak enough for you you know there's always an exception to the rule we say that all the time you know there's always your conor mcgregor's your muhammad ali's your floyd mayweather's people that can just talk naturally chael son you know yeah chael's another one um you always have people like that but they're very few and far you know between so you know for a fighter just to come out and to talk trash and cause drama just to try and sell his fight to me, that says, you know what? Your fighting doesn't speak loud enough for you. I, my fighters, I don't like my fighters calling people out. I don't like them talking trash. I don't like them, you know, making bold predictions because all you do is put more pressure on yourself. Because now, if you go out there and look like a clown, now it's going to come back and bite you in the ass. Okay, but you know, it's if you have if you ge if you genuinely have beef with somebody and you come out and you, you say what's on your mind, I'm not going to say anything about that. But if you got to manufacture stuff just to try and be exciting. Maybe and, you should and I agree. Him. Maybe maybe Yancey didn't want to spend energy creating something out of nothing like you're talking about. Right. But I think Cowboy's the wrong guy to do this with. I, I agree. I think that you can be cordial, but I think with Cowboy, the fight starts before the fight. The fight starts during fight week. If you look back through Cowboy's career and some of the, the people that have just kind of not shaking his hand when he's reached out and tries to smile at the at the first face off of the fight week those guys bother cowboy and whether it's true or not i think just looking at some of those fights masvidal he was not playing nice with cowboy and we saw what happened in that fight darren till young guy really brash guy he's one of those guys that he's a natural i think he'll be one of the next natural can do it on the mic really? likes to do it on the mic and backs it up when he gets into the octagon, he we saw what happened there. Now, when he, we saw with Nate Diaz back in the day, he tried to be smile and shake hands. Nate right. Diaz knocked his cowboy hat off, gave him the double fingers, you know. And by the end of the fight, Donald was flipping off Nate, but he was a bloody mess. Right. And he was hurt. And I think there's a pattern there, a little bit. Cowboy's always trying to, to break the ice fight week. And I think that's his mental warfare. I think that's how he goes about it, to try to get them sucked in, like, oh, you can be friends with old cowboy, we're going to have a beer afterwards, you know, right. I'll take you out on the jet ski, but people forget that his level of striking is deadly, right. and he sucks them in, and I think Yancey's a great, a really nice guy, but 
I said it in the preview. I thought he was already playing into Cowboys game without Cowboy even trying it, bringing him a Cowboy hat with the Hawaiian tie around it. Right. And, you know, Cowboy, but to Cowboy's credit, Cowboy drops him, lets him up, and gives him a hug. Yeah, that's see, I did not like that's that. A, that's and the then knocked him out again a minute really. later. But, <laughs> hey, just, you know, geez. everybody's got their own approach. Generally, everything, I don't know Cowboy personally, but everything right. I've heard about him is he's as legit as they come. Like, he's a nice guy. Real dude. He's a respectable <laughs> guy, you know, like, um, so I don't, you know, I don't even know if it's him playing a game. I genuinely think that's just, just his him. personality. But I do know when the lights come on, it's, you know, it's feast or famine with that guy. You know, like either he's going to come out and tear your head off or, you know, he's going to go out on his shield either way. But um, that's just kind of the way his career is kind of morphed. You know, that's just the way his career is going to be. So, you know, here's hoping to to him having more wins and keep powering those wins up. Maybe he can get it straightened up. It sucks to see a fighter that talented not be able to actually reach the finish line. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like he's been so close to title shots and, and he's, you know, he's just gotten to having, yeah, he's been so close to having tie, that having the title around his waist and he just hasn't been able to get over the hump. So it'd be nice to see him put a little run together before it's all said and done. Now he's talking about going back down to 155 after he spent the last year and a half now, the last five fights, I believe, five or six. With Cowboy, it's hard to keep track because he fights so often. Right. Um, it seems like he just moved up to 170, but again, he has like six fights up there already. He is talking about going back down. Kind of said, "Hey, Khabib, I'll be your Huckleberry. Like, you know, let's let's do this." He he wants Khabib. He wants those types of fights because people forget how dangerous Cowboy is off his back. And we talked about that with Yancey. If Yancey dropped him out, he needed to be careful. But it never got to that point. We haven't had to see Cowboy use his jujitsu in a long time. But you know, he we at the end of his run at 155, ending with that Dos Anjos loss for the title, where he got just bulldozed in the first round it looked like he was drained and i i liked how he looked at 170 but then he's ran into dudes that are just playing bigger right. how do you feel about him going back down there for the end of this uh i see what you're doing and you're not going to bait me you're, I'm, I'm not i'm not going to let it happen i see what you're doing you're, you bring up khabib and you know i'm a big fan of khabib and you're, you're trying to give me time i'm not going to jinx near magomedov i'm not doing it you're okay? not okay so i'm just not going to touch that fight because as soon as I say Cowboy's going to lose, he's going to come out and knock him out. Or if I say Khabib's going to win, just something. Yeah, you're right. Khabib's going to take him down and just beat him and down. I just, right? I, just, I, just, I just talked about this. I'm staying away from it. So mm. what I will say is uh, I think I think he's he's going to be closer to a title shot if he goes to 155. Um, I think that's a better place for him. I think 170, like, Masvidal's a freak, okay? But the way Masvidal beat him up, doesn't bode well if you look at what the other matchups are as you move forward. Like how how Darren would you Till see how would you him. see Tyrone Woodley against Donald Cerrone? I don't want to even like, see that. I don't I don't think it's a good matchup, honestly. You know, and 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 I'm probably jinxing Woodley. Sorry, Woodley. Uh, yeah, uh, Cerrone but, wins. Headline reads: Cerrone wins welterweight title with triangle choke see, after Albert Rosales picks Tyron Woodley. Yeah, so I'm just going to stay away from it, and, and I'm not going to I'm not going to vote for anybody on that one. But I, I do think he's he's got a better shot at the title through 155 than he does at 170. Do you think it's going to be? You know, he hasn't made that cut in a while. He's not getting younger. The cut gets harder as you get older, from what I'm told. Um, do you think that he knows that he can still make that weight successfully? Because at the end of the day, he's going to try to make a run for a title. He can't just make 156. He has to make 155. Genuinely, I think I think Cowboy can do whatever he wants, honestly. Like, I think if that guy puts his mind to it, he can do whatever he wants. He's a, um, he's a veteran of the sport. He's seen everything there is to see. He's made the weight cut a million times. He's never missed weight, if, I, if I'm if i correct. Yeah, I don't he think hasn't. he's ever missed weight. No. So... I think I, I don't think it's an issue for Cerrone. That guy's a true, true professional, like in every sense of the word. You know, that's he's such a company man for the UFC. Like, I don't know that you have anybody who's more professional than that guy. He shows up. He always puts on a show, win, lose, or draw. You know, so um, if he says he's going to make 155, I, I would believe him. Can I throw a fight out there for you for his comeback fight to 155? What do you think? With James Vick. I think that's a great matchup. They're both guys that could fight at 170 easily. James Vick makes that cut. He's on a roll. I think he's that's tough, a and I think it's a fight that James Vick needs because he's not getting any respect, and he's getting lost. He in needs a name. Vick needs a name for sure. Yeah. Um, 
that to me, I think that's a very good fight for for Cerrone. Actually, I think that's a really good fight for him. Uh, me personally, honestly, I kind of like to see Cerrone stay at seventy and fight uh, somebody like James Krause. Yeah, I'd like James Krause think, or Tim think, Means would be a yeah, sweet matchup you know, too. Like, I, I think, think that's a really good matchup for him and their names and they're you know and they're doing well and I think it would be very competitive. You know, but so. I agree. I think the UFC, if he does decide to stay at one seventy, whether he has four fights, three fights, two fights, one fight left in his amazing career, I think, I think we'll see them do him a service by not giving him some crazy. There's some good matchups for him at one seventy. Mm, Maybe not in the top five, but there's definitely some great matchups for him there. Well, and, the thing uh, about Cowboy too is him. even in the top five. He can hang with anybody. Oh, yeah. Whether he comes out with the win or not, he can hang with anybody. I don't care who it is. That guy can hang with anybody. And he's a main eventer always for the UFC. Look at him. He was in the main event, still selling out out at an arena, coming off of a three-fight losing streak. So, Cowboys, shout out to you, man. Congrats on the big win. Yancey, keep doing your thing and maybe uh, lighten up on the hugs during the <laughs> middle of the fight. That's my only thing. Like, you just got knocked down. Try to refocus yourself uh, because about a minute later, the fight was over. But that's going to do it for this week. Thanks a lot. Albert Rosales of Grinders Fitness, Evan Herzog of the Fight Magazine. It's been Takedown MMA on IBTV.us and Roman TV.